So let's start right there in Gainesville. Hottest topic there, of course, in the SEC. And Gator fans got what they wanted. Todd Grantham officially fired by Dan Mullen, as well as offensive line coach John Hevesy. These are two guys that uh, have been on staff there with Dan Mullen his entire time in Gainesville, and they both came from Mississippi State. John Hevesy, in fact, has worked with uh, Dan Mullen dating back to 2001. These guys go long ways back, and it's his case more than uh, Todd Grantham, more to do with recruiting than anything else because I certainly don't think offensive line has been Florida's biggest issue, although it does seem to be an issue from time to time. I mean, heck, they couldn't run on South Carolina. I don't necessarily think that was the reason he was dismissed. More about the fact that uh, recruiting has taken such a a drop-off there on the offensive line for the Gators under Dan Mullen. But, of course, Todd Grantham getting the boot maybe a year too late, maybe uh, should have been done last offseason, probably would have bought Dan Mullen some goodwill there in Gainesville. But, man, it's hard to spin this one other than um, sacrificial lambs here. Dan Mullen had to fire somebody to keep his job, and and who knows if he's even going to keep it here this week. Nothing to really gain one way or another. You could beat Sanford by 100 points. It's not going to cool this fan base. And there is a report from Saturday Down South's Neil Blackman that uh, Scott Strickland and some of the higher-ups essentially made Dan Mullen make these changes. What well, I don't know if quite uh, the story behind there, but uh, head on over to Saturday Down South, read Neil's piece, and basically just said the higher-ups have uh, demanded some kind of change. And there's also uh, some report that I've heard. I, c- I can't recall where I saw it from, but apparently Str- Strickland and Dan Mullen got in some heated exchange and – Strickland was uh, kind of forcing changes there in Gainesville. So we'll see at the end of the day if this is uh, enough to keep Dan Mullen employed there in Gainesville. I think he's got to win out because if you lose to Missouri, you lose to Florida State. Florida State's not any good. Missouri struggling. Of course, hell, could have said the same thing about the South Carolina Gamecocks coming into that one, yet uh, they obviously got it done over the weekend. So, like I said, a lot of news to get to here in Gainesville. Dan Mullen met with the media. And before we get to that, I should have noted that uh, linebackers coach, coach Christian Robinson is going to take over as the defensive play caller for the rest of the season there in Gainesville. And the uh, former Syracuse coach, Paul Pascalari, I think is how you say his name, he was kind of Dan Mullen's special assistant. I think that was his title, special assistant to the head coach. He's going to be elevated to a position now that uh, there's two openings there on Florida staff. I believe they're going to leave a GA to coach the offensive line. So that's where that's all at. But Dan Mullen did meet with the media on Monday. So let's jump into that on his decision to fire Todd Grantham and John Hevesy. So obviously we realize time to time how much of a business this is. Mm -hmm. Just how difficult – and what was kind of the emotional toll that it took on you to make those decisions to part ways with, I mean, a guy you've been with 20 years on a staff and then another guy you're a friend with? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's always hard because, you know, you have, uh, those guys are, are you know, uh, friends of mine. I have a lot of respect for them, both excellent football coaches. Um, but it is, you know, I mean, my, my responsibility as the head coach is to do what's best and what I feel is best for the Florida Gators. Uh, and that, that comes above it all. And, and so, um uh, it was obviously a really tough decision to make. Uh, you know, it was something that was weighing on me. It was something that I uh, was looking and saying, hey, there's, you know, I, I think it hit. This, I'm probably going to make changes at the end of the season. And I thought, you know what, for the health of the program, for the health of everybody, and if you know you're going to do it, we're going to uh, let's make that move now and, and get us headed in the direction we're going into into the future. Specifically, specifically what, what led – to those decisions, how, how did it kind of reach that point where you just felt like you had to make it? Then? You know, I, I just think, you know, with where we were playing, I looked at look at how we played Saturday and, and some things that built up to it of, you know, we weren't where we needed to be. I, I think you look into a season, um, you know, and, and every season, our goal here is to every season, you come in with a goal to win a championship. I think every, you know, I mean, we talk about this, every team shows up, their goal is to win a championship. Uh, 
very few do. Um, right? If you go to the national championship, there's going to be one that gets to do it. If you go to the Power Five conferences, there's five uh, in the country. Uh, so it, it's hard to judge success by that completely. You know, that's obviously our goal. But I, I think, I, you know, one of the ways you look, say, it's a successful season is are you a better team at the end of the year than you were at the beginning of the year? Um, you know, and so for me, one thing, looking at where we're at right now, we're, we're, we're not better than we were earlier in the year. Uh, in fact, we're, we're, we're worse than we were earlier in the year. Uh, so at, at that point, I looked and I said, hey, we, we got to make some changes uh, with what, we, what we're doing, with where we're at. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I think part of that, of the, to do that and moving forward in the direction that we were going to go within the program moving forward, uh, that's the decision I made for those guys. We'll start looking for people for replacements moving forward. Uh, it's a great opportunity uh, for a guy like Christian Robinson, a really good young coach, can have opportunity to go call a game for the first time. Uh, you know, I, I think we're I'm fortunate enough in the defense side of the ball that you, you move a guy in, in, in Paul Pasqualoni, who's one of the most you know respected coaches in, in football, uh, can move from kind of a, a my special assistant. Uh, person that, that's with me that I lean on an awful lot to and on the field spot, uh, you know, and, and to really help out, uh, a, especially a young guy like Christian in that role uh, moving forward. Uh, Mike Soling gets an opportunity. I think he's a, a good young coach working with guys. A great opportunity for him to, co to get those O-line, and I'm going to spend a lot of time with them and the O-line to make sure uh, we're getting the work done we need there. All right, so you could tell there, I mean, Mullen's a loyal guy, man. These are These were tough moves. These are moves... A lot of Florida fans would argue. Obviously, Todd Grantham, chief among them, should have been made long, long ago. Uh, but they they had to be made so that in any hope, Dan Mullen could keep his job. And it was well known Todd Grantham wasn't going to come back. So you might as well make this move. It's going to be tough going into signing day, but that's typically what they do. Man. They they wait till after the signing period, then they make these changes. At least this way you can be more transparent with these recruits. You may not have a defensive coordinator lined up by that mid-December. I would think they're not going to, if, if I had to guess here. But we'll see how that plays out. And then here's also Dan Mullen. He had a lot more to say on how much he, responsibility he bears for Florida struggles. I thought this was interesting. He's taken all the responsibility. And he was asked about uh, – the confidence that he has that A.D. Scott Strickland will bring him back for another season. I don't know how confident he truly is, given this uh, response he, he gave on Monday. How much responsibility do you think you bear for where we are right now? Me? I, I'm the head coach, so it, I, I bear it, all of it. It's on my shoulders. You know, I'm the one that's responsible for this program. Uh, I'm the one that's responsible for this team uh, and how we go perform. And so, you know, I mean, that's, that's, that's your job here as the head coach is to take on that responsibility. Uh, and my job is to make sure that we go perform and this team plays to the Gator standard, which we're not doing right now. And uh, so, you know, it's my responsibility to find a way to fix that. Has Scott given you any assurances that you're going to be able to, you're going to get a chance to fix this next year? Yeah, I, Scott. I mean, my 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 talks with Scott is he'd think. I mean, and ours is he's pretty confident that that we're going to get this fixed. Now, I can't speak for him on that deal, um, you know. And and I mean, within his confidence, it wasn't about this year and next year. I mean, it was a long term picture of where we want this program to be uh, in in many years to come. So yeah. read into that how you will, but you know, he's saying long term here, but I don't know uh, because if. Scott Strickland does not pull the trigger and the Gators continue to go downward. I mean, Strickland may be next up. There was the issue, I believe, with the women's basketball coach down there. That That's somewhat of a black eye for Scott Strickland. The basketball program under Mike White is uh, not trending the way many Gator fans want it. So things are starting to stack up here. Scott Strickland may be in a tough spot here sooner rather than later if the Gator football program doesn't turn around. That's adds to the complexities of all these issues and one other thing here I wanted to throw it to Dan Mullen because I think this is going to be key how attractive will positions like the defensive coordinator position under Dan Mullen be provided he does return provided you gotta assume he's gonna be on one of the hottest of hot seats here in the country how confident is he that he can 
land an elite defensive coordinator to come to Gainesville this offseason. Are you concerned with who you'll be able to get to take this job given, you know, who knows what your status is going to be next year moving forward? Are you on the hot seat, all that stuff? You know, are there going to be people, is there going to be people lined up to, to come? This, play, is, this, to is, coach this, is, this is Florida. So, I mean, there's, I think there's a, a long list of people that want any job they can get here at the University of Florida um, in, in any aspect. All right, so he sounds confident there, but I don't know. It's going to be tough. I mean, LSU, obviously going to be hiring a new head coach, and you got to imagine they're going to have their pick of the litter when it comes to defensive coordinator. Now you're going to – and speaking of LSU, I mean, that's kind of what it reminds me of. This time, a little over uh, – well, last offseason, Coach O trying to get defensive coordinators. He went after Cincinnati's Marcus Freeman, couldn't get him, went to Notre Dame, tried to get Barry Odom, couldn't get him. I'm forgetting a couple others, but uh, Deronta Jones obviously was not the number one choice. But And I think most of that had to do with the fact that uh, everybody knew Coach O was maybe on some dicey ground there. So...